Last week, I spent four days at Goodwood Festival of Speed, filming and photographing race cars of all different shapes and sizes, and it was absolutely brilliant. Goodwood is one of my favorite events of the entire year, and I also made a vlog about it. So if you're interested in checking out the vlog, go check out my new vlog channel, and the vlog will be up there. So I thought I'd share five of my best tips when it comes to automotive videography. And uh, excuse this mic placement, I wanted to film in my new studio, but it still isn't sound treated, so I hope it doesn't sound terrible. I thought getting the mic as close to my face as possible was probably going to help so um, hence this really poor mic setup. Welcome to the Festival of Speed. So my first tip is related to preparation. It's really important to prepare well and plan out where you're gonna take your shots or where some of the best spots could be. I'm really lucky that I've been to Goodwood uh, multiple times in previous years and I know the event really, really well. I know where a lot of the best spots are, uh, especially without a media pass. I must note all of my video and photos were taken from spots that weren't media sections. I didn't have a media pass. Um, I was just there as a regular spectator. So you can get amazing footage without having a media press pass. And that's what I'd recommend if you're trying to get into the space um, and trying to get a media pass in the future, which is something I'm aiming to do as well. But if you haven't been to the event that you're going to before, uh, I'd recommend going on YouTube, looking at some videos or on Instagram, having a look at some photos of some of the spots that you think might be suited to what you want to film and uh, finding out you know, where they are using like a track map or something on their website. Most events will have some sort of track map that you can look up on the website uh, or even download on your phone and then you can have it with you on the day and you could mark out your spots that you want to hit. This is really important because at different events and racetracks, there are certain shots that you kind of just have to get. They're the main shots, the kind of hero shot, if you will. Uh, for example, at Goodwood, it's the shot going down towards the start line. It's an iconic shot. It's actually quite difficult to get, but maybe I'll go into that in a different video. But there are those shots at different racetracks around the world that are kind of those hero shots that you want to make sure that you've got. They are kind of the key shots, but you can then also add in all the other shots from different points around the track. Making sure that you mark these out on a little map or that you've got them in your head uh, helps massively to make sure you don't miss any out. <laughs> My second tip is that you've got to make sure that you do have the correct gear. See, racetracks and events like this are typically quite difficult places to shoot because there are often large distances between you and where the action is happening. This is the nature of racetracks because they need lots of runoff areas, uh, unless you're at somewhere like Monaco or a street track where it's just a wall and then the track. In most scenarios, you're gonna have the track, a little area of grass, gravel, runoff or whatever, then maybe a barrier or a fence, and then you. So there's quite a large gap between where you are stood and where the action is happening. So making sure you have the right gear, longer lenses are often an absolute necessity. Having the right lens is gonna be really important to make sure that you get those shots that you want for your video. Having a lens that is stabilized as well is also gonna massively help because when you're shooting at longer focal lengths, it's much harder to keep your footage stable if you're shooting handheld, or I'd recommend using a monopod or a tripod or even a gimbal if you can get your hands on one or if you own one already. If you wanna get really technical with it, I also recommend that you'd have a camera that shoots with pretty high frame rates. I use my Sony a7 Mark IV, which goes up to 60 frames per second. It also has the option to shoot in 120 frames per second, which is even slower, uh, but that's in 1080p. The reason you're gonna to want to do this is because often cars are moving really, really fast. So being able to slow them down, get a really great detail action shot in slow motion can look awesome for your videos. Longer lenses can be really expensive as well. So what I would recommend if you can't afford one or you don't want spend money on a long lens for you know just a few days a year then i'd recommend that you go out and rent one there are so many different places you can rent from or you could also pick up a secondhand lens to save some money
My third tip is introduce movement and do it well. It's not always easy to do because the subjects in motorsport are moving very quickly generally and that is quite difficult to video. In a similar technique that lots of motorsport photographers use, try panning. So as the car comes across you, if it's coming across your frame, pan the camera with the car and try and match its speed. That'll keep it nice and sharp and it will give you a lovely blurred background as well. That helps it really pop off your screen. But also when the cars are stationary, if you have the opportunity to go into the paddocks at events like Goodwood, you have so much access to all these cars when they're just sat around or being prepared to go out. I'd recommend you introduce movement in those shots as well to keep it dynamic and keep it moving. If your subject isn't moving, not having any movement can also be a bit jarring, especially if you want to mix it with shots of it on track. So whether that's as simple as just a kind of push-in shot or a side shot, um, what's that called, like a dolly shot, just introducing that movement into your shots will help you make a much more interesting video and will help things tie together much better. I'd recommend grabbing a camera cage and some handles to help you kind of have better grip, especially if you're trying to get nice and low, which always makes race cars look really good, um, so that you have better grip and more steady shots. Or if you have a gimbal, put it to good use, keep those shots nice and steady, they'll look so much better. My fourth tip is one that I think is often overlooked. I mentioned earlier that you might want to bring a camera that can shoot high frame rates and that is great. But don't forget that shooting at regular speed as opposed to slow motion is also really important. It's crucial to show off the true speed of your subject because if you don't, then there's a lack of context. If everything is in slow motion, then your audience doesn't really know how fast that vehicle is actually moving. So mixing in some true speed and slow motion makes the slow motion more effective, but also just gives you some context. We can appreciate the speed of the real car. In fact, I'll even give you an example. If I show you this car going in slow motion, it's cool, but it doesn't really have a lot of context. You don't really know how quick it's really going. And if I show you it now, it's in full speed and that could be a really effective shot for your video. Of course, there are moments for both uh, and I'd recommend mixing them together to create the most effective story. Okay, so my final tip is get creative with your angles. Automotive videography is one of those genres that allows you so much creative freedom. There's no real true right way of doing it and there are so many different opportunities for creative shots. If you're looking for inspiration of some examples of amazingly used creative shots, I'd recommend watching uh, Michael Fassbender's Road to Le Mans series. It's on the Porsche YouTube channel and it is one of the best filmed motorsport documentaries I love the use of creative shots. Not only is that show just brilliant in terms of storytelling, but the visuals are brilliant. So I'd recommend watching that if you want some inspiration. Essentially what I'm trying to say is don't just get the eye level standard panning shot. Try something different. Try panning through the trees or getting really low and lying on the ground or finding that little vantage point where you can just see the car in one tiny corner of the frame. Just do something different and get creative with it. Getting creative with all your shots will make your video more interesting and it gives you so much creative freedom when it comes to editing as well because you can mix in loads of different angles of the same car and it will just make your video stand out a lot more. I find motorsport videography really creatively freeing. You do have those barriers of how close can you get to the cars or you can't stand here or you can't get a viewpoint here but creatively when it comes to your shots you can really do whatever you like. Whether you're barely interested in cars or a huge car person just like me, I'd recommend you get out there, go to your local car show or go to a huge event like Silverstone. Go out there and try something new. Use these tips to make sure you're making an awesome video and most importantly, have tons of fun because these events are some of the absolute best. Look out for my film from Goodwood that's coming out on the 6th of July. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. All your support has been absolutely amazing. We've just hit 700 subscribers, which frankly is pretty cool. So thank you so much for all your support and I'll see you guys next time.